Well, hello, everyone. Uh, we're here for another episode of Cross-Examination. And as usual, I am joined by Will Schalter. And uh, we have a lot of uh, things we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about time period and uh, time in fiction. But we're also going to talk about uh, The Mandalorian and The Mandalorian Season 2 and all the cool Star Wars uh, stuff that we got coming out. Uh, we're going to talk about WandaVision and... Uh, from Marvel and uh, Wonder Woman 1984, which both kind of relate to our time period discussion. So um, the first thing that uh, that I want to get into is the Mandalorian, and Will Will is is uninitiated <laughs> on this, so so he he will be patrolling me for spoilers uh, uh, to, to where hopefully I don't give away anything too big. But but I am just to warn you, I am going to be talking a little bit about some things that could be considered spoilers for some of the episodes uh, in this because we're going to be I want to talk a bit about where this stuff is going. And uh, if you've watched, if you've watched it, you, cause you, you can enjoy these things on a lot, on a lot of different levels, you know? So, so if you've watched uh Mandalorian, the, the first season or the second season um, you know, you can just enjoy it for what it is. It's, you know, they, they finally figured out with Mandalorian that star Wars is a Western, mm. you know, and which is something that I love, you know, I mean, they, the, from the very first episode, you know, you walk, he walks into a, a canteen and he's, you know, it's, it's a very like, you know, old mm -hmm. spaghetti Western scene. I mean, mm -hmm. it's just, you know, mm -hmm. um, and so they, they've done a great job with that, but then the, the special effects, the story has just been, been really great. And something that I think that they've done exceptionally well with Mandalorian is, giving service to the fans really i would say mandalorian i have seen more fan service out of it than any other kind of um marvel you know um any of them i mean star wars because there have been so many things that just for a little bit of background there so there used to be so star wars came out you know, 1977, Star, the original Star Wars movie comes out and it kind of starts this whole universe. So then um, we fast forward a little bit. We got three movies. I think it was 1983, the last Return of the Jedi came out. Mm -hmm. um, and that was the, you know, kind of the end for a while. Then it was actually a little bit of a connection to me. My, um, the, the guy who was my first editor and really kind of got me, uh, started in in the business and uh, was was a real mentor to me was Lou Aronica, and Lou is actually the guy who came up with the idea to have Star Wars books, and so uh, it it was kind of a cool uh, symmetry when when I because those were the books that actually got me into reading when I was when I was younger because they continued the story of the Star Wars movies, so there were books that the first three that came out were uh I, timothy zahn was then um the and it was the heir to the empire uh series i believe the i forget exactly what i think the first one was heir to the empire but uh um and then i i i i'd have to look i don't have them in here uh kind of in my other office um but so it, it was a, a trilogy that really kind of was like a new star wars movie trilogy and picked the story up right from return of the Jedi. And then there was, after that, there was a whole series of books. Now remember back on the Timothy uh, Zahn thing that I, I mentioned, because this is actually going to come back into play with Mandalorian. Um, but so there was this, this series uh, that started it all with the star Wars books. And then it became, it blew up. It was, there was hundreds of star Wars books and this whole, mm -hmm. This whole expanded universe is what they called it. Uh, and I, I got pretty into the expanded universe. I read quite a few of the books. Um, when I first started out and was wanting to, you know, I mean, it was a, I, I loved the Star Wars movies, wanted to see where where things would go. And, you know, so it was just really cool uh, getting to kind of experience those worlds and to getting to dig in deeper with the characters you know i mean that's really where i became a big star wars fan is where you kind of like the whole world building and the lore and the different 
um, planets and the different species and the different, you know, and you kind of get to know all these things that you don't really get into with the, with the, the movies and, you know, right. as much, you just kind of like see that character and you don't yeah. really know, get to know about their home planet and their, you know, ecosystem and all this kind of stuff that some of the books give you. Um, but now fast forward to when we got to the J.J. Abrams era and when they were going to be continuing on and actually had the, when the force awakens before that was coming out and actually had the opportunity to um, basically start fresh. And so they started fresh with those new movies and basically threw out all those books. All those books now are, are considered star Wars legends. I think they call it. So it's non canon. It's non like right. it doesn't actually, they don't actually connect with the main Star Wars plot um, and the main like flow of the universe. Um, so they did all that and kind of threw out all this. So, so that was kind of a, a bummer. But the cool thing that they've done is they've incorporated some of that stuff back in because here was the hope for those first three. Uh, here was my hope. And mm -hmm. I know a lot of other people's hope for those first three movies like the J.J. Abrams did, which we've seen the trilogy, you know, and it is what it is. I mean, yeah. I think they were a good Star Wars experience, but they didn't add, no. they didn't, they didn't go deeper like what we really wanted to um, and didn't really, I, I think the villains were a big problem. We just kind of rehashed the emperor, you know, Kylo Ren. I was not impressed with, I mean, at the very, at the very beginning, when he first started out, you thought he was going to be really cool. And then he kind of, I don't know. I didn't. Yeah. I mean, his, his arc was fine, but is the execution of uh, some of it, I, I wasn't impressed with, but, um, but I, I mean, for the most part, for the most part success, for the most part, good movies that, that kind of get that adventure feel, you know, that, I mean, they had the feel of star Wars movie, you know, of, of right. that Indiana Jones. Right. Right. Action adventure, you know, because that's star Wars. That's that's really the difference between Star Wars and Star Trek. You know, right. Star it's Trek adventure. is a is yeah. a drama that has right. action yes. worked into it and all this. Star Wars is an action adventure. You know, it's yes. a sci-fi, it's it's Indiana Jones in space. It's, it's, Indiana it's Jones in space. Yeah. you know, it, it's that kind of feeling. Mm -hmm. Um so the cool thing with this new season of Mandalorian is they have really they have got, you started incorporating things from Star Wars, the whole mythology that were even just little things like, uh, okay, the Dark Troopers is one. The Dark Troopers were the, uh, there was a, the first Star Wars first person shooter video game was called Dark Force, Star Wars, Dark Forces. Yep. I played that, yep. Uh, you did you play this? Yeah, yeah. Doom kind of yeah, first person shooter, right? And remember, it had the 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 worst ones were the 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 garbage scowl guys. Do you yes. remember this? Like yes. you'd go down in the sewers at one point, and the like the little guys that poke up with the little eye, yes. like in the first yeah. Star Wars movie, you have to yeah. fight a whole bunch of those guys, and they are mean. Yes, like you don't you don't want to fight them. But anyway, and then the dark troopers were were the main mm -hmm. kind of you know, one or one of the main kind of villains of, of that mm -hmm. series, these dark troopers, because that's what you're, that was kind of the whole point was of mm -hmm. the thing is they're developing these dark troopers. Well, the dark troopers are in Mandalorian season two. And actually it's got like, they, they've got where that was, that had already. So, so basically Star Wars, dark forces, they established, okay, that, that happened basically, I guess. Mm -hmm. And so now in season two of Mandalorian, we get to see the version two of the dark troopers. Nice. Uh, and which was when they busted out the dark troopers, it was like, oh, how cool. You know, it was mm -hmm. just that fan service moment mm -hmm. of where I was like, oh, it's the dark troopers. You know, mm -hmm. everybody else just kind of goes, oh, well, they're cool. They're, they're, they're troopers in their dark. Yeah, it's like record cool, cool stormtrooper uh, guys <laughs> yeah. that are that are really mean, but um, <laughs> they've leveled up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so, but then there are some also a lot of other things um, that they brought in from um, the, the Clone Wars TV show, from the mm -hmm. books, from mm -hmm. uh, the, the Clone Wars was an animated yep. TV show. Mm -hmm. And one of the big ones is uh, Ahsoka Tano, 
um, who was actually Darth Vader's um, apprentice hmm. uh, before he was Darth Vader when he was Anakin Skywalker. Um, and so we, we get to see an actual live action when she's young in the mm-hmm. Clone Wars thing. She's a, a his you know apprentice, his cha- trainee, mm-hmm. and. Uh, now so in Mandalorian season two we get a live action version of her um where we get to see uh you know rosario dawson plays her uh and and yeah it was very exciting uh and then she takes it a step further and this definitely could be considered spoilers okay because this is this is a big spoiler for that episode but the episode where the Mandalorian where where he meets Ahsoka Tano she's looking for someone and you don't know like she's she's trying to get information out of the this these imperials and uh is looking for someone it's revealed that the person she's looking for is Grand Admiral Thrawn Mm. and Grand Admiral Thrawn goes back to what I said about the those books the very first Star Wars books that came after Return of the Jedi Right. And Grand Admiral Thrawn was the villain in those books. And he is a super cool villain. He's a, a alien. He's um, blue skin and red eyes. And he's like all white admiral uniform. You know, he's just very, he's like, he's one of those villains where you, you don't hate him. You know, we're like, he's not terrible. He, but he is unstoppable kind of mm-hmm. like he's he's like you respect like he's a military genius he studies the cultures of the people that he fights and mm-hmm. like learns about them and he you know um one thing that he did in the books and i don't know if um this is going to carry over into the live action stuff or not but uh he actually found a way to neutralize the jedi so the jedi are powerless against him because he he had found these creatures that created bubbles in the force and so they're a jedi if a jedi tries to attack him he's got these uh salamiri i think they're called um that create this bubble in the force and they they there's no force around them Mm -hmm. and so they like a jedi would go in there and have no force powers to to could be completely cut off from the forest trying to attack Grand Mano, Admiral Mano, Mano, then. Yeah. yeah. And so, yeah. And so he, he kind of levels the playing field on that. Mm-hmm. You know, he, he's just a lot of the things. And in the book, like he, he did some, some really cool um, just misdirection type things. Like he, he convinced them that they're, that he could shoot through their planetary shields uh, by hiding a cloaked ship under the thing. And then he would fire from above and then fire from the actual ship. So there was, mm-hmm. so they, he was firing from within their shield, mm-hmm. making them think that he could penetrate their shield. Mm-hmm. And so then it like made the, Oh, he's got some new weapon. He's mm-hmm. got, you know, when really he didn't, he just tricked him into think he tricked him into he, he's very manipulative. And I think that's, man, I wish we could have seen, with this, the J.J. Abrams, Abrams trilogy, I wish we could have seen Grand Admiral Thrawn in there and have a, like this really kind of cool overarching villain that mm-hmm. that is is kind of that smart, manipulative, different something different to the Star Wars yeah. world, right? Um, right. You know where he he's really this like military genius, right? And and he you know, so anyway, we're now seeing Grand Admiral Thrawn coming in. Um, to the star Wars world. And I, from what I had read, so there are three, there's Mandalorian. And then in that time period, there are going to be other TV shows through Disney plus. So there will be an Ahsoka, the Ahsoka Tano that I mentioned, there's going to be an Ahsoka TV show. There's going to be one called Rangers of the new Republic, um, which will, um, deal with some x-wing pilots that are that are featured shown in there in uh one episode of the mandalorian and then uh the book of boba fett Hmm. is actually not a boba fett shows up in some really cool ways in uh mandalorian season two and works with actually works with the mandalorian and they kind of team up and so which was 
some of the coolest moments. I mean, yeah, mm -hmm. seeing Boba Fett in action was was you know satisfying. After all, it, oh, it was so satisfying. Oh, after that, after that pathetic death in Return of the Jedi. Yeah, after <laughs> Boba Fett, Boba Fett, plunk. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, well, no, just terrible. Anyway, we won't we won't get into that. Thank you, George Lucas. <laughs> yes, thank you, thank you, thank you, George Lucas, for killing. For, for creating awesome characters and then killing them in terrible ways. Terrible ways. Not using and not using them to, to the most. But anyway, but we're 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 gonna make it make up for that now. Because yeah. that, that's the cool thing is 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 we say, oh no, he didn't die. And now right. he's back and now he's gonna get his own TV show. Sweet. And so so he's gonna be connecting to that. And then what I have read is that there will be crossover events between all these, like oh. that they will have an overarching story mm. and grand admiral thrawn will be the overarching villain mm. for like all of them and so that will be like this time period which we're kind of interesting that we're we're talk we're going to talk a, briefly here in a little bit about time period and time and fiction and and things and what they're basically doing in star wars now so we they did those movies of that came after return of the jedi that was this um new republic era you know um which is kind of where where these these take place before the new movies so the mandalorian and the ones i mentioned all are going to be taking place before the new movie um the force awakens so if we're looking at the time period the time period in star wars the timeline in star wars gets really wonky because mm -hmm. you know we jump around in these different things and if you're not really into it you, you can kind of just lose track yeah. Yeah. So, so that's where where these are. Is they're kind of like not too long after Return of the Jedi. We're talking like within like five years after Return of the Jedi. Yeah. Right. That all of these these three three or four shows, um, all will be taking place. Now they've also got other ones coming out. Uh, Andor, uh, that is uh, a spinoff from Rogue One, the movie that they did, uh, which I thought was one of the, really one of the best. Star Wars ones in in recent memory. I mean, Rogue mm -hmm. One and Mandalorian, I think, are really mm -hmm. a couple of the uh, shining examples. Mm -hmm. um, then we're also doing an Obi Wan Kenobi show um, mm -hmm. that has Ewan McGregor coming yep. back, um, and actually uh, rumored to have Hayden Christensen yeah. uh, returning as Darth Vader in that. Yeah. Um, I don't know that that one, it sounds like it will probably be set around. Well, it, no, it would be after the first, the episodes one, two, and three. Yeah. It'd be between so three. it would be between three and four. So right. yeah, that gets even stranger. Then yeah. now we're throwing another thing into the mix because now I feel like this is where star Wars is going. Okay. This is where the new, um bread and butter is going to be because there is an era that they call the high republic which takes place like hundreds of years before the first star wars so before luke skywalker before darth vader mm -hmm. hundreds of years before that when the jedi knights were the peacekeepers of the galaxy like the knights of the old republic like that right game. yes yeah. knights of the old republic kind of and actually it wouldn't knights of the old republic would actually go back even oh even farther okay that. So the High Republic would be a, a okay, a kind of a, even a different era. But I feel like like they've been doing a lot of High Republic books. Oh, okay. And they've been doing a lot of High Republic like, and the rumors are that like the some of these new movie trilogies that we have coming out and possibilities for for Star Wars stuff is going to be in this High Republic era. And one of those, they're actually doing a TV show, uh, a I assume on Disney Plus. A TV show called The Acolyte, um, which is during the age of a higher public. And instead, uh, it's in a pocket of the universe and a pocket of the timeline that we don't know much about. So hmm. that's 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 all the that they kind of commented about it. But um, so, yeah, we don't really know much about what that is going to be, but I assume that's going to kind of be the intro to this new Republic era. Hmm. Um, then we've got a Lando TV show. Um, one called the Bad Batch, which is a, a Clone War spinoff uh, that it'll, there'll be a uh, animated 
Uh, and then there's an animated uh, a droid story. So there's a, uh, uh, which I don't know if you remember back in the day when we uh, uh, had that uh, uh, droids, the droids yeah. TV show. Have you watched droids at all? Nope. Yep. Back yeah. In ba- back in the day, we had droids that like, I think it only lasted like one season. Maybe. Yeah. I don't, I, if there was two, I'd be surprised. I thought there was only like one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and so it, I don't know. I, I assume it'll be better than droids, but, <laughs> but I, I did watch droids. Uh, so it'll be C3PO and R2D2 having their own little thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there are supposed to be new movies coming out. We got a, a Rogue Squadron movie uh, coming in 2023. Mm-hmm. And uh, in 2025, there's supposed to be a Taika Waititi, um, who did Thor, the Thor Ragnarok, mm-hmm. and uh, what else? Well, he did Jojo Rabbit, but yeah, uh, yeah, he did Jojo Rabbit, yeah. And and, mm-hmm. and what we uh, what we do in the shadows, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, but but I'm trying. To, there, I think there's another big movie that he did recently. Is he? Oh, is he doing Guardians? The new Guardians of the Galaxy? I think so. I think you're. I think you're right. I yeah. think he's doing the next Guardians of the Galaxy movie. Well, James Gunn was pretty involved in those. I I don't know that that don't. Yeah, don't he's, doing, he's doing. No, he's doing just the next Thor movie. Just the next Thor. He did Thor, Thor Ragnarok, and now he's doing Thor: Love and Thunder. Yep. 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 Uh, and then there's been talk of Ryan Johnson getting his own trilogy, which I, the last Jedi kind of put some mm-hmm. stuff on that. And then the, nothing has been mentioned about it, but the guys who the, who did game of Thrones were uh, initially supposed to be, had been offered uh, to do a trilogy, a star Wars trilogy. Sure. Um, the guys who were the runners from that. So we've got a lot of exciting. Yeah. That's kind of crazy. The way Star Wars is kind of blowing up through this okay. Disney Plus thing, and yeah, and, uh, and really, and and it is. I'm glad that because I what I always said is like if I would um, before the the Force Awakens came out, and before all that, um, I I always thought that it would be a good thing to just reboot the the thing and go Knights of the Old Republic. Just start um, from the beginning, kind which, of. Which, yeah, go just go to it, because that that's the thing. Star Wars, you know, it's such a big universe. It's such a rich mm-hmm. uh, universe, like filled with so much lore and so many species and so much. You know, I mean, there's just such this rich um, background to pull from, and yet we focus on this like Skywalker. We focus on like uh, it all. Oh, Luke Skywalker has to be in it, or oh, you know, right. the, you know, and no, it, it, it's so much bigger than that, you know, than these yeah. individual characters. And I think right. that they're they definitely would be well served by getting away from that, by getting away from that. It's the Skywalker saga, and right. it's not. It's this. It's a Star Wars. You know, that's just one part of this uh, the the overarching Star Wars saga. So I think the High Republic thing could be really cool because you can totally do, I mean, you can just start fresh, you mm-hmm. know, go into this whole new thing, whole new, you know, you've got, I mean, uh, you, you've got the, Re- the Republic at its highest when the Jedi Knights are at their, their strength and you've got thousands of Jedi Knights across the galaxy doing their thing. So you can do a lot of big stuff. You can do a lot of cool stuff with that. Um, so, so I'm excited to see where, where things go. And I'm especially excited to see where they're going to go with Mandalorian season three. Uh, like I said, season two, just really lots of great, I, I can't recommend Mandalorian enough. I mean, whether you're a star Wars fan or not, if you've never even seen star Wars, this is the place to start. Mm-hmm. Um, cause I mean, you can just jump in and not really, you don't really have to know a lot. You can, it's just kind mm-hmm. of, you know, it's it's just a you know they're 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 not that complicated it's it's uh right um well yeah it's just it's easily it's consumable right i mean and you know i think oftentimes you you kind of hit on something when they said when you're talking about the skywalker saga because it goes back to that formulaic thing you know well we gotta we gotta do a new star wars movie but we gotta have harrison ford in it because harrison ford sells tickets right right for, for no other reason. Whereas, you know, here comes Mandalorian. Who's in it? Nobody. 
Do, has Mandalorian ever been up? No, never been seen before in any Star Wars, you know? Yeah. Ever. It's like, well, how's that going to sell tickets? Because it's a good story. <laughs> you know, like right. you could just walk into it, never see a Star Wars show and follow the story, follow the storyline, excuse me. You know, and I think I think that oftentimes, you know, with those universes, you need sometimes you need a new entry point that you don't have to give mm -hmm. this long six movie story background so that the person that's never seen Star Wars before, you know. Right. It's just kind of standalone. Yeah. This is a story about this. And yeah, blah, blah, blah. Well, and, and like you say, you're, you're kind of you, you hit on something there with with the whole like, oh, we've got to get this actor. We've got to get this. And we've got to, because that's a lot of what Hollywood is now is yeah. is all looking at the numbers. Yeah. You no, know, you know, it's all about um, what kind of built in audience do we have here? OK, well, we know Harrison Ford has a built in off audience of this and we know that, you know, and so, so yeah, it, it is kind of cool to see them uh, branching out. Uh, I think Mandalorian was a huge success yeah. and, and, and probably was a, a bit of a risk for mm -hmm. a, a, you know, just a test to sure. see how, how people are going to react to this. And I think, you know, and baby Yoda kind of kicked, kicked. Yeah. Out. He's got the, you know, he's got the Grogu. Character. Grogu yep. is his actual name. We find yeah, out. But, yep. 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 But yep. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I, I think it's, there are, are bright things coming for the, in that world. And, uh, mm -hmm. and it's a great place to, it's a great time to get on. Great time to, to check out uh, mm -hmm. the Mandalorian. Like I said, I can't, can't recommend it enough. Just, it, it's the, honestly, it's the best thing that happened to Star Wars in I don't know how long. And it's just a really good show. I mean, it's a, you know, it's just a quality show. And some of the, uh, I know they did some really, um, as far as the way that they filmed it, there was a lot of, they, they came up with like revolutionary ways to film things mm. um, for this show. And it shows because it looks as good and as big as a star Wars movie, mm. but it's a, you know, minuscule budget. Yeah. 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 But it's a smaller budget and it's a, and it's a, uh, a TV show, you know, a weekly yeah. TV show. So I think, uh, you know, I mean, TV might be the, the future for Star Wars. You know, I mean, I, I, I would not have said that five years ago, but, you know, now with these new streaming services and the way that, that I mean, the way that the, the technology has advanced, it's it's pretty exciting. Yeah. So now that I've rambled on enough about, uh, about Star Wars and, and all that stuff, we, we, why don't we talk a little bit about... Um, I, I had mentioned a couple projects, uh, one in the Marvel, one in the um, um, DC universe um, with WandaVision and then mm -hmm. uh, Wonder Woman 1984, respectively. And, and, and as we had mentioned too, there, there's often a, um, you know, like with Wonder Woman 1984, the, we're, we're seeing kind of that nostalgic yeah. feeling toward the 80s where we're getting a lot of movies going back to the 80s we're getting you know kind of in how when we were growing up in the 80s mm -hmm. like you know you know we would get movies going back to the 60s mm -hmm. you know and and that kind of thing where we get we get movies going back to the 50s or you know mm -hmm. and so now we're actually seeing people going back to to the 80s and and two different time periods and and so i wanted to talk a little bit about um just how to, how to do that if you're you're an established or a, a aspiring writer and you're wanting to set your book in a different time period so i thought we could just riff a little bit about about that i have a few tips uh that i'll, that I'll kind of mention just to kind of get things started and then will if you want to uh throw it throw out some tips of your own and, and uh and we can kind of talk about it uh so tip number one, research. Uh, the details are, are what's really going to sell it. Um, and it, it's, it's even more important to get those right when you're going back to those, those time period and those period pieces. And uh, when you're trying to go back, because at that point, the time that it's set in really kind of 
becomes a character of its own and has its own personality. And, and so you have to have all those things of what's playing on the radio, what's, right. you know, right. and, and so you really have to get into the details and the research and the uh, you know, I mean, just to, an example, you know, would be like uh, I, I, I read something not very long ago that was set in like World War II, and and they they talked about like the flyers on the ground for for certain things, you know, like these all the different flyers from people had dropped the uh, you know littering the streets that were something right. to do with the war. I don't I remember exactly what the flyers were about, but but it was very like time specific, mm-hmm. like, and it was something that you knew as you're reading it, that that was real, that that was, uh, mm-hmm. you know, and, and that's part of, you have to kind of create that you, you're getting people to suspend their disbelief for whatever you're doing in the story, you know, to believe what you're, you're doing. Um, and so to throw those real world elements in there really anchors, it really kind of mm-hmm. adds that, uh, that whole other layer that people can really latch on to. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and the only way to do that is to research, you know, right. to read books, to watch documentaries, to get, you know, and just really sketch out those, those details of, of what are the, those really cool little details that you can throw, throw out there. And what I always find is that, you know, sometimes, um, you know, you do a whole bunch of research on it and then like the stuff that makes, it's kind of the iceberg principle. Mm-hmm. You know, where you've done this huge mountain of, of mm-hmm. research and things like that. And then like what actually makes it into the book is just the tip yeah. of the iceberg poke, yeah. poking out over the top. Right. And uh, so you don't want to overload. Right. You know, I mean, you know, right. what, if you're going to, that's, that's a big mistake that I see a lot of mm-hmm. uh, people make with these kind of, you know, a time period type book is that they will come out and, they'll the first five pages are exposition about the time period and what it was like mm-hmm. and oh such and such was in president and yeah. and this was the blah 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 and the, you know and yeah. no that is not at all what no. what you want to do no, exactly. uh, and and then i'll get into the I'll, I'll get into that a little bit more when i on some of the other tips well yeah uh, and and yeah and it, and it goes back to that because you can see how different books and different movies do that really well like for instance you know one of the things that threw me off uh, I didn't watch Wonder Woman, you know, yeah, I don't want to get into it too much, but like, I think there's sometimes where they might have gone too heavy with it. Like, there's a scene um, that I did see where um, they're in the subway in Washington, D.C., and he's just amazed by the subway, blah, blah, blah. And so but it's like New York City had subways in World War One. Yeah. I mean, sorry. And they were beautiful. They were tile, you know, I mean, they're, yeah, I mean, they were actually prettier than they, a lot prettier yeah, than they are exactly. now. I'm like, so it's yeah, like, you sure. have found them. they had trains, you know, that were ran by electricity. Like, you know, like, you well, know, yeah. so. It's yeah. Like, so, yeah. Like, yeah. And that, that's, that's a good example of like what I'm saying. Like you have to kind of be careful yeah. of. Yeah. Like, yes, the, the cell phone. Yes. They're surprised by. Right. You know, when you see, Oh, what are these people walking around with? Oh, they got these phones. But you know, a lot of stuff they had, if they had that, when, you know, you have to kind of research, oh, when did we have, when did they have that? When did they yeah. start right. wearing this? When did they yeah. start using these kind of tools? When did they start? So yeah. that, that all goes into your research. That all, yeah. that all kind of goes back to that. Yeah. It's a good point. Yeah. yeah. Um, another tip is that when you're looking at that, don't just think of the visual because everything like what we're mentioning now is all visual. You know, it's all like you saw these pamphlets on the ground that related to this event that's going on Mm -hmm. in history for this time period. You saw, um, you know, airplanes in the sky, you know, Mm -hmm. that obviously, if you know, at a time we didn't have, there there was a time in in our history when we didn't have airplanes in the sky in case anyone didn't know that. Um, So, I mean, those are all visual things, but my, my second tip is engage all the senses. So think about a world without indoor, indoor plumbing, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, think about a world where we don't wear deodorant. Right. Right. We, we ride around on horses that crap. Yeah, we ride around on horses <laughs> yeah. and we don't wear deodorant and we don't, you know, I mean, yeah. it's like, it's, it, it's just something that you don't really 
think about that you don't. And so, I mean, there, there are a lot of those things where you, you go back and, and that really, a lot of times what, um, I had somebody told me like, if somebody ever comments to you that like the story, like if an editor or an agent ever comments to you that, um, that it feels thin, mm-hmm. well, the book feels thin. Like I, like everything's good, but it just feels a little thin. Mm-hmm. So it's usually because you don't, you weren't engaging all the senses. Right. I can see that. And, and so I was like, Oh, that's a good uh, point mm-hmm. is like that. You just kind of like went straight along the, and you didn't get into all these like nuances to, to anchor people into the settings, into right. the places, into the, you know, it just felt a little thin. Like it just like you weren't like the experience was thin you right. know, is kind of, is kind of where, where that's going. So, right. so be sure to, to engage all the senses. Um, and then the final kind of little tip, and of course this isn't an, any sort of exhaustive list. Right. It's just a couple of tips. Um, but story and character development before history, mm-hmm. because cool. at, at the end of the day, that's all <laughs> that's, it's really, it's just, about your story and your mm-hmm. characters it's about mm-hmm. your characters even more than the story mm-hmm. you know i mean the the, the characters are, are what are your real anchor yep. uh and and we're, what people are really going to connect to right. um and so you don't want to get don't get bogged down in the history of things and trying to you know because right. because the the research part that i like i said it's the iceberg you know that's we're just seeing that little bit like you still have to do all that work unfortunately Mm -hmm. you still have to know because Mm -hmm. that's that's what i find a lot of times is that i do so much research just figuring out that i can't do something Mm -hmm. you know there's so much research that goes into where like i want to do this and i've got this idea that it would be cool if i could blah 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 and then you get there and you're like no i really can't i can't Mm -hmm. make that work and you did all this work just to find out that you couldn't no just no (laughs) it's a no yeah. And so, uh, I mean, that's a big part of it. Um, but mm-hmm. getting back to the third step, don't, don't let that bog down your story. Don't let that research that you've done get in the way of the characters. You know, you want it, it to be in there. You want it to be natural. And, and I think a, a lot of that is if it's all in your head, then it will kind of subconsciously. Right. Come out. Come and out come together. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it, yeah. and something else to note this this wasn't one of my tips but kind of goes along with um w- with that last one you know story and character before the history uh, theme also you mm-hmm. know don't don't sure. put your th- the theme is important and and right. and all this but but you can go a bit too heavy handed with your theme as right. well it can be distracting and so that that can also and and you can especially with period piece ones where you're throwing in these like you know um theme type stuff you can you know if it takes place during the the i don't know civil rights movement or the whatever you know you can be a little too heavy-handed sometimes with yeah with some of those things and i think that theme is something for me that i feel like you it's not like a conscious thing. Mm-hmm. Like, like mm-hmm. people, it it's good to like, if, if you're thinking about it and you kind of catch on to it and go, Oh, you know, I, I feel like I'm yeah, like, this is the direction this story is going in. And I feel like right. these themes coming out, but what I always find is those don't come out until you like look back on the book. Right. 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 Those, mm-hmm. the, you know, there, there are so many times where I were, you know, you don't realize you subconsciously you realize what that you're writing toward a certain theme or that everything is geared towards this theme but but like your conscious mind doesn't really process it and i think that's kind of a better way really i mean you know you you kind of got to be conscious of it uh, at times and you kind of got to have it in the back of your mind that you're like thinking about it and thinking about ways to connect the things but you don't like you keep it in the back of your mind right you know you're you're not like overtly going okay i need this scene and this character right. to emphasize my theme you know right. you need that character to do something for your story that will the expose of- the other characters or expose right. what, needs to, what information needs to be exposed for your story not not the theme 
So, so those are just a few, few tips for the aspiring uh, author. Yeah. Uh, anything and anything to, to kind of add, Will? Well, kind of just going off of to your points there, you know, um, the first of all, the theme, I'll just go off of that. And I think, I think you're absolutely right. I mean, because it does come off heavy handed. And sometimes, you know, if you, I'll use your example of civil rights. If you want to, so you're going to set the story in the 1960s and you're going to, you know, civil rights, blah, blah, blah. And you're going to hammer this home. And it's just like, it's so blatantly obvious what you're doing mm. that, you know, but boy, you're setting it in the civil rights and it's a story about family, you know, about blood being thicker than water, you know, suddenly, you know, different themes could emerge from a setting that you wouldn't expect the theme to emerge from is mm -hmm. far more, far more interesting or thick, right? Not so thin and so, so easily, you know, displayed. So I, I think you're right with theme that it should emerge gradually and not be heavy handed because nobody wants to hear your diatribe, on, you know, if you're reading fiction, no, they don't, they want it to emerge steadily and sort of come out, but to, to hit them in the first couple chapters and just be like, this is a story about how, you know, it's like, I can't well, put that in way. You and, know, and I, that's, that's a good point too, is you can't preach to anybody no. as the author. No. Like if you're, if you're writing a story and you're, you're somebody, uh, you can't do that. Now yeah. your characters at times. Yes. yes. And, can expose like an idea or something that they believe in or think right. if you're doing it as the author, yeah, that's not, that doesn't work. No, it's actually no. interesting times that when I, when I've had like a character, like express their beliefs at something and somebody will be like, like come at me, like, like that's my belief. And I'm like, that's not my belief at all. No. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like that's just that's the character belief. <laughs> yeah. You know, so, so you gotta, gotta uh, walk that fine line. But, yeah. And the other thing was, you know, I was thinking it was kind of going off of that, you know, when you're researching, embrace the limitations, right? These characters are limited and that's why you're putting them in that setting because it, it, it creates that tension, you know, man, if that person, you know, was in 2020, 2021, they would be able to pick up the cell phone and look that up, but they can't. They don't have an encyclopedia in their hand because it's 1981. So they have to figure it out on the, you know what I'm saying? So it's like oh, yeah. embrace those limitations because as a reader, it can make, it could create that tension that gets you engaged. Like, how is he going to do this? How does he do it in 1981? He can't do it. You know, he doesn't have it at his fingertips like he does in 2021, you know, no, and, it, and it, it helps. It's interesting. Look, look, you mentioned, I was actually thinking about one book that is, is a, a great book. And one of my favorites, uh, Red Dragon. Mm, mm -hmm. uh, which was the, the first uh, introduction of, of Hannibal Lecter. Yeah. Um, and actually, the yeah, I, the, the book, great book. The, the If you haven't read the book, it's quite a bit different than the, the movies, any of the movies that they've done. So, so it's, it's worth reading the book. But some big things that happen in that book are very tied in with that time period. Like... Mm -hmm. um, for example, he takes pictures of all of his mm. crimes mm. and this was in an era when you had to have your pictures developed. Mm -hmm. You know, they, you didn't just yeah. take it on your phone and it was oh, digital yeah. and whatever. Like, no, yeah. you had to send it somewhere. Right. And so and, that was a big plot. Look at your photos. <laughs> yeah. And they look at, yeah. And they can look at your photos. Yeah. <laughs> and, and so that was a big plot point in this, thing like where okay how is he getting these pictures developed how is he right you know and so they that was one of the things another big plot point that i remember from red dragon was um there was something to do with newspapers where like he was seeing the news they were community he was sending coded messages to lector through newspapers i believe mm. and so they or er, I think this was Red Dragon and not Sun. No, it wasn't Silent Slam. It was Red Dragon, and and so there was something where they were they figured out that he was seeing the newspapers mm. uh, before anyone else, like that he was you know seeing them before he should, and so they kind of like oh well, how's he, you know, and but they, here are these plot points that like don't even exist for us today, like yeah. newspapers. What are you like yeah. are you talking about when the newspapers coming out or when you're talking about developing, but. Well, yeah. But the, the cool thing that I was thinking about that is it doesn't really, it's not like the book doesn't age well because of that. Yeah, yeah. It yeah. has now become 
a period piece. Yeah, it's a period and piece. a really good period piece mm-hmm. where it really shows like that was something that was the world was completely different in that right. aspect. Right. And right. and so yeah, it it, it mm-hmm if you can do that with your period piece and kind of encapsulate a, a mm-hmm. moment in time and that time period and kind of mm-hmm. really sum it mm-hmm. up. I mean, you know, well, like today, you know, if you were writing a story today, you would like social media probably comes into play. Mm-hmm. Like his yep. Facebook, you know, right. like the equivalent of the, the guy getting the, his pictures developed, you know, is like, Oh, now we're looking through people. Oh, it shows in social media. Um, mm-hmm that mm-hmm. you know and it's geolocated um, I, 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 I recently yeah i recently had a, a story where this person says you know in a, in a story like oh no i didn't know them i didn't wasn't there or whatever well then really are you sure yeah. well because they tagged you on their yeah your or, or you were in the background of their photo of here mm-hmm. yep you know and so it, it's kind of a different world you know like where we're the modern times. I mean, if you think about it, what we're writing today that is in the modern world Mm -hmm. uh, is going to be a period piece. Yep. Eventually. Yep. Yep. Uh, Which is interesting thing that, so, so everyone knows I'm not doing COVID like that. My books will not have, (laughs) they're set in a world that COVID didn't exist. Okay. That's just the way it is. I'm not, no, (laughs) I'm not, I'm not going to have it like where, Oh, well, we can't do that. We've got to be social distance. No, <laughs> I'm not even. No, it took place two years ago. It took place two years ago. There you go. There you know, you go. I, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm not. I'm, I'm not going to have all my guys wearing masks and right, right. And like, oh, the terrorists don't have anywhere to attack because we don't gather. Yeah. But yeah. Anyway, but no, no, I'm kidding. Suddenly, all the plot points are gone. <laughs> yeah. Suddenly, I don't have anything to do. There's no airplanes flying. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, but I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm sure somebody could make some really cool stories about, because I mean that, yeah, the isolation yeah. and things yeah. like that, but well, I've yeah. chosen not to throw my series that was already right. going that much and throw that into a whole nother. Yeah. Especially if this thing is really going to, we get back to normal, whatever normal is right in the fall and we stop wearing yeah, masks. Sure hope so. Sure hope yeah. so. I mean, if it goes to that, then it's like, yeah, it's this 18 month thing that happened that people will tell their kids and kids will eventually be like, whatever, mom, whatever, dad, you know, like, you know, <laughs> I, I hope that's what it's going to be. I yeah. hope that it's going to be that, that we'll look back on this and it'll be a period that, yeah. it, you know, I hope that it doesn't carry yeah. forward that everyone is so, because people are on edge, man. Yeah, they are. They need, people need a vacation. <laughs> yeah. The <laughs> world needs a vacation right now. Everyone just needs just to people. Chill. Yeah, people. I mean, I just, we're just we're seeing it out there. It's, we're triggered. <laughs> yeah, people, seriously. People are like, triggered. Seriously, like, are. My my this, this is totally off top subject, but we can talk about whatever we want. So yeah, yeah. Um, the my, my wife was actually recently out at a in a um. Uh, basically, she didn't even cut this person off. There were two lanes, and she kind of pulled up next to the per. Any, it doesn't even matter. Right. The person was upset. Like gave her a look, gave her a dirty look and all this. And she's like, oh, I, you know, I don't know why that person's mad. She goes off, goes to the grocery store, wherever she was going. That person drives on. She comes out. There is a note on her. Ooh. This person had come back, a note. searched for the car and wrote a very, we'll say strongly worded note, wow. just going off. On her, you know, and she's like looking around, going, "Am I going to be stabbed?" Yeah, like, what, I mean, what is this? You know, right? but that's. I think that illust- illustrates like what is people are just on edge. People are just like, you yeah, know, we're, we're, we're cooped up. We're we're yeah. frustrated yeah. by all kinds of things, and it's just people are on edge right now. So yeah. so it's there's a way a, like lo- be loving at each other, yeah. like just. Love each other even when they don't deserve it. Love each right. other all the time right now because right. you because otherwise you might get stabbed. Yes. Like like it's just it's bad. Yeah. Yeah, Ethan. I mean, yeah, I mean it it goes it goes back to you took away their movies, you took away, you know, their you know, at one point took away all sports. I mean entertainment. Yeah, entertainment. Those, anybody that wants to argue that the arts and entertainment don't serve a purpose. No. Nah. 
look what happens when you take away the arts and you take away you take away creativity you know out of you know classrooms and you take take it out of culture this is what you get you get a bunch of triggered people that don't know how to unwind that you know write notes on you know somebody for a minor traffic faux pas you know like right yeah (laughs) no (laughs) go about your business just who cares like the the amount of time that the person wasted going coming back finding the car writing a note doing a, like right. yeah. it, it just that's where baff, we're at baffling that's where but, we're at but yeah that so so that's a i mean yeah that's something to consider everybody right now is is just just be loving on people cuz true they need it we we all we all need it but there are some of us out there you know i'm a, i'm an introvert so this this whole quarantine thing has just been fine i just i just go into my like okay i'm gonna go in here and do the same thing i always do you know but you know of course of course it's right you know church and the, the the movies has been my big thing going to the movie theater yeah. that has been like like soul crushing honestly like because yeah. i i mean i was right we went we went to a movie every weekend yep yeah and 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 now yeah. You know, now that's not even a thing. And I don't know. If, I mean, it's, we right. might be coming to a day when theaters are a thing. Right. Right. Uh, and, and, and there are some of these movies, you know, we, we recently had the announcement of uh, Warner brothers bringing all of their movies um, coming in 2021 to, to HBO max and releasing them on there as the same time as theaters. Right. Uh, and uh, it's just, yeah. it's, uh, it's, I see, I see it from a business standpoint right. and from their model and from making money and from all this, but man, just the, from an experiential standpoint, I'm yeah. going to be very sad if theaters become not a thing Yeah, like where that's not like going to the theaters and seeing a movie on the big screen is no longer something that we do. Yeah. It's not a shared that's, experience. You lose another shared experience that we all, you know, love. Right. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, that's, and that's that's kind of where you, you see that. And we, you and I were talking about it, and it's like, we I mentioned that I saw Tenant and I saw it at home, and I was upset because I I felt like that was taken away from me. It would have been, I was a good film as it was, but I know it would have felt so much different being in a movie, you know, in a movie theater. Oh, yeah, and see, I actually did get to before they shut down again. Yeah, you got uh, it in August when they actually yeah, uh, like when it first came out when they they yeah. were kind of trying to yeah get back into things yeah. uh and and that came out i got to see it in the theater and yeah it was a it's a yeah. theater movie i movie mean it's a, movie. it's a big you know the big all that stuff that the you know the craziness with the car explosions yeah. and you know the action scenes and stuff it just it's just not the same on the no. small screen no i mean it's just not, it's just not. and yeah i, I mean so ho- hopefully we we can kind of get back to normal right. on that before too long. Um, I think it's like the distraction too, right? Of watching it at home, right? You're watching it, and then all of a sudden the wife says, "Oh, can you go get me this?" It's like, oh, it's yes. <laughs> and then like I know because yeah, that that's what I've told. To, to, I'm like, yeah, when we're at home, we just pause and we go and we do. It's not the same experience. No, it's not this continuation. It, it, like when yeah, the continuation the. Yeah. with no breaks no and you're like locked in and you don't want to pause because no. you're experiencing what's yeah. going on yeah you know, whereas like yeah. like you say there's no time that you watch a movie at home that you don't pause yeah. it at least four or five times to go yeah. get a drink go to the bathroom go to you know oh so and so's called oh by the way did i tell you and then you got to pause the movie and to have a conversation. Have a conversation. You never do that in the movie theater while it's going. Yeah, no, you can't do that in the movie theater. <laughs> so, well, some people do, but some people do, and the, yeah, don't the, like those people. Those people. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So, um, but a couple other things. Uh, I, I think we're 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 going to be getting pretty close on our time here, but uh, a couple other things that I wanted to mention. Uh, we mentioned Wonder Woman 1984. Mm-hmm. Uh, just kind of throw out a couple quick reviews here for some some things to check out uh uh, when in regard to like the um time i I thought i thought they did pretty well with uh the the feeling like it was in the 80s you know it felt Mm -hmm. like yeah 
they they had the sets down yeah definitely yeah they had the sets down they did they did good with that and then even like the fact that like um pedro pascal's uh character i don't remember his name in the movie but uh the this villain character that he has is kind of this remember back in the 80s when you had like the 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 amway and the pyramid yeah. schemes and like and they, there were all these guys there was always a guy on tv trying yeah. like telling you how to get rich and there was always right. you know and so i thought it was cool that like they made the villain yeah. in like even the the character and the villain for that right. that was actually a great time period yeah thing to set up the time period because his very profession his very livelihood and his character illustrates something that was very specific to that yes and america in that time right so right. so they did a really good job with that uh, um as far as the action and and things i it was maybe not quite as it was a little bit lacking as as comparison to the other one mm-hmm. um wonder woman once so it really the first one really set a high bar i mean just it nailed did. it really did i mean out of all the, the recent dc films i mean i think everyone says this it's true it, it really was firing on all cylinders and yeah yeah, yeah that that one and um uh aquaman yeah aquaman yeah yeah, yeah. I, I i thought aquaman was even mm-hmm. aquaman was was mm-hmm. probably the best out of all mm-hmm. of them i think and then wonder wonder woman right up there with it mm-hmm. uh so it's definitely not up to those heights you know what i mean like it's 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 a sequel and it's you know mm-hmm. kind of the continuation of of her story. I thought Kristen Wiig was really good. I thought uh, you know mm-hmm. her the the whole the theme honestly was pretty cool. Um, this theme of like you can't have everything that you want. Yeah, be careful what you wish for. Be careful what you wish for, and it kind of got a little deeper than that. You know what I mean? It it, yeah. it had some some good points of you know. Well, even the, the, you know, there was a lot of redemption mm-hmm. areas there and just this kind of, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it was good in those, those aspects. I thought that it tried to get probably a little deeper mm-hmm. than your standard uh, superhero fare as far as the theme right. and what it was actually trying to say. Mm-hmm. Um, so I appreciate that. Um, and, and, you know, it's got some good action. It's got her, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Whipping with the rope and all this, and yeah, yeah, um, those are, man. She's, yeah. So, so yeah, I, I, I enjoyed it. Um, the next one I want to talk about is Wandavision. I watched the first two episodes of Wandavision, uh, and I don't, I'm not sold on this. <laughs> honestly, it's. So it takes place, it's basically like, so it's, these are two characters from the Avengers, Scarlet Witch and Vision. Mm -hmm. Vision, you know, spoiler Mm -hmm. alert, Vision dies in, in, you know, the last, one of the last Avenger movies. Mm -hmm. So you don't, like it's, the first two episodes were like watching I love Lucy. Like literally, Mm -hmm. like it was like watching some old 1950s, 1960s Mm -hmm. show. Yeah. Show with with America. Where where it's like, Oh, like, like bewitched. I love Lucy. It was like, yeah, it was totally just a copy of bewitched or, and the plot was like something that would have happened in bewitched or one of those shows. It was exactly like one watching one of those shows Mm -hmm. and I don't care. I, yeah. If I wanted to watch one of those shows, I'd go back and watch one of those shows. <laughs> it totally like the execute and I, and people are like praising this for like, oh, it's a bold approach. It's a d- n- no, it's not. It's it, it the execution is is really poor. Like I totally see what they're doing and like how okay, it's in this whole world, mm-hmm. but it, they did not do enough of there are there are a few moments that happen like that show like kind of allude to you that like okay there's like some weird things going on right 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 there are some things but the whole plot of the episodes were not Mm -hmm. to do with any of that the Mm -hmm. plot of like the plot of i think it was the first episode was that 
his boss is coming over for dinner. And then so, like her doing the dinner for that. And oh, she's using her powers. And she's doing, you know, and I'm like, this doesn't relate. Okay. This obviously doesn't relate to the larger storyline. Right. So you basically just gave us a whole episode of I Love Lucy. Right. Doesn't serve the actual story of the. Yeah. You know, okay. I mean, if you want to set it in that backdrop and those things are going and you've got the little jokes that you're doing, because I mean, they did, you know, like they they did try to all oh, like given mm-hmm. the wink yeah. and the way that they would do it towards the old. Show. Right, right. The whole corny. That, I'm cool with all that. I don't I don't have yeah. a problem with like them doing this kind of weird, different right. thing. Right. But it wasn't all geared toward like you don't feel this overarching thing. And yeah. like because it's just barely touched on. And, and then it's like, oh, something strange. And then, no, we're going right back on to the throwing a dinner party. Or we're going right back on to her dealing with the neighborhood ladies. Or, you know what I mean? Like, so it just, it didn't feel like we were, I watched two whole episodes that felt like they were, like I would watch reruns of I Love Lucy or, right. or or bewitched or something Mm -hmm. and didn't really get any overarching thing. I I mean, I'm probably going to continue watching the show because I'm like interested it now, like actually going to do, what are you actually going to do? Where's this going? Right. Right. Where, what is, because if you keep just throwing out episodes from random old TV shows that where you're just kind of like doing a mock episode of that, that's just not, I'm sorry. I'm just not interested in this. I'm just not following you. Like right. I get the whole thing. Like, okay, it's different. She's actually like, I don't know what's going on. I don't know if right, she's right. Like, the universe to make it this way. I don't know. Like you get the sense a couple times that like these people are, it's not an illusion. These people are real. Like even the right. other people they're interacting with, you know? So mm-hmm. so are they like trapped? Are they being mind controlled? Are they, you know, so right. I mean, there are these questions Right. But the actual writing of the episode didn't like we could have done those bewitched storylines kind of in the background as that's going along. But really, you know, that like something else is happening, something else is going like what is really going on. And I didn't feel like they did enough of that. Yeah. The uh, you know, background became the foreground of the right. story. Instead right. Of exactly. The- like this thing that should have just been the background yeah. set up. Right. Came the entire focus and the plot of the episode as opposed to the other way around. It's a, it'd be almost like watching Superman from like a Daily Planet standpoint. Yeah. And, right. And and where does he keep going to the bathroom for? And then comes back a little bit sweaty or, you know what I'm saying? Right. That's, you that's know, exactly but you're watching, what I'm saying. All you do is watching them, right? <laughs> watching them work at Daily Planet, right? Right. Like, yeah, if he just, if it was like, uh, yeah, if it was just shoot me or something, uh, you know, like that old the the with David Spade. I don't know if you're yeah. I think yeah. the magazine or something is the reason right. I said that one. You know, like if right. it was just like a sitcom, and which actually would kind of be kind of funny, right? Like right. to have a sitcom. Actually, now that I say that, it kind of it, <laughs> it almost could work if you did it right. Like where like Jimmy Olsen's the main character or whatever, mm-hmm. you know, and like the sitcom is just like, and then Clark's like, oh, I gotta go, you know, yeah, gotta, where's he keep going? I don't know. He's just like totally not even a thing like where it's just so background like but see at that point you're doing it on purpose you know you're you're right right exactly but when it's overt like that again it goes back to this thing where you get too involved in your setting right and you make the setting the story right I mean that's right I mean and that's kind of what they did is they they were doing this homage to to these old tv shows and um uh you know kind of doing this period piece where there's where, where they're they get to go back in the 60s and they get to go back in in time and, and this kind of different world but but yet the story the actual story and actual characters mm-hmm. weren't served at all right you know? because right. the characters don't be even behave like the characters that you know right you know, and you know that when things actually have, like, that's, I, I guess I'm, I'm kind of going, where are they even going with this? Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. is it going to be, you know, is it just going to be this first couple episodes are going to be like this? And then we just need to have a little patience and then it's going to kick in and it's going to be 
really cool. I don't know. But right now I'm not, it's been a pretty big disappointment for me is like the first, especially it being the, and I know it wasn't supposed to be uh, Falcon and the winter soldier was supposed to be the first Disney plus Marvel show. And uh, it ended up being WandaVision instead, just because of, you know, COVID and the filming and, and scheduling and all that. Um, But but this is the first Marvel um, TV show. Right. Well, besides, well, ages. they did the ones on Netflix and things like that. So, mm-hmm. there, yeah, there was a whole Marvel TV, but I, I mean, um, on yeah, Disney, first one on Disney Plus, kind of yeah. The, yeah, this kind of new, yeah, this like new. because even the Marvel TV that like Netflix did was separate. Yeah, yeah. you know, there was Agents of Shield, there was right. you know, but but there was a separate, like there was it was even a separate studio, you know, it was a separate yeah. entity within yeah. the organization. You know, there right. was Marvel TV, and then there was the MCU, yeah, yeah. Marvel Cinematic Universe. Right. And so they weren't connected. Now, this these shows that they're doing on Disney Plus are basically just continuations of the Marvel movies. Right. And so they're they're actually like fully connected, fully integrated. Right. And for this to be like the first one of those really kind of was a disappointment to me. And I, I I don't know. I mean, I don't know if a lot of people, other people are feeling differently, but I don't know. My wife and I were both kind of sitting there. We kind of got done watching it and we kind of went what like what you 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 really had a i really had a feeling like what did i just watch right like it was kind of a waste of time and and that and that's just it you know i you sometimes watch these shows and i think that's the problem sometimes with television because they know they have you for hours so they can just kind of waste your time and for me it's about episode three or four i give up i'm like you know i just Unless somebody says, oh, no, you got to stick around for season two. It's really good. And I really trust that person's opinion. Then I'll do it. But it's like and I'll just push through. But there's lots of different television shows. Boy, by season four or five or sorry, episode four or five. If it's not catching my attention, it's not. I mean, I'm done. I mean, I'm not going to. I mean, it's just like, yeah, it's just like a book. If you if you if you've read the first hundred pages of a book and it's and you're totally not interested and don't want to continue. Yeah. Maybe you should yeah yeah you know, i mean that's that's like i mean that's just you know and if if yeah i mean that's mm-hmm. like anything else right and and yeah i that's i i a lot of times won't watch a um tv show um that's like uh for, for example uh there's there's a show called prodigal son that i've been wanting to watch i really like michael sheen mm-hmm. uh, who is in it and people have told me that they I, I shouldn't even say this, but people people are saying like that they that it copies a lot of things from my book series, like because it's about a father and son, like where he's so the father is a serial killer, and then the son is like working with the FBI or whatever, mm-hmm. and and so I don't I don't know all the details about the show, I but uh, but I'm I'm wanting to go and watch it, um, but I don't watch a show that's only got one that only has one season, mm-hmm. I just don't do yeah. it. Yeah, you know, what's the point? I, I wait until it's in its like second or third season yeah. because then I know like, okay, people are interested in this. This is a this isn't a one off thing. Because right. there's there's nothing worse than really getting invested in a series and characters and then it only being one season. Right. You know, it cuts off and then and then you never get to see what happens or you you yeah. you know yeah. are, are left wanting more kind of thing. Right. So, right, but yeah, that so WandaVision. I don't know. I'll, I'll have to report back. The, yeah, this two, this will have four. to be an ongoing <laughs> uh, uh, report here you on Crossing Family, <laughs> where we try to figure out this whatever whatever they've got going on, whatever the the plan is with this. We can call it Wanda Watch. <laughs> Wanda Watch. Yes, <laughs> that's funny. Ethan's Wanda Watch. Yeah. Ethan's Wanda Watch. This week in Ethan's Wanda Watch. Um, so yeah, I, I don't know. We'll, we'll just have to kind of see where, where it's going. But but if you're if you're wanting to like excited about this and have been thinking about watching this and and I I, I don't know. Hold on. Comment. Tell us why. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and, and maybe I'm wrong. You know, maybe yeah. a lot of people feel differently. But I I was kind of a, a little surprised by it a little little taken aback that that it it kind of went it just felt like i i had no problem like i said i had no problem with what they're trying to do 
Mm -hmm. yeah. the execution a, of it. Execution. I sure. don't I don't know. I I feel like it's kind of lacking. But but we'll see. I mean, there's mm -hmm. we still got a lot of season left. You know, I've only uh, watched the first two episodes, so but uh, I think that that probably brings us to to the end of our time here today. We, we've talked a lot about uh, a, a lot of good shows and a lot of uh, uh, gave a, uh, hopefully some good tips uh, about people who are, are maybe wanting to write their own stories and, and how we can learn from from the stories that we love that that we're watching here and, and you know, take that information and kind of apply it to our own work and mm -hmm. um because I think that's that's the thing. You have to write books and stories that you would want to read right. and that you would want to, you know, see mm -hmm. on the big screen or, or or on the small screen. So, so I um I, I think uh, we've had a good uh, discussion today. Anything uh, for the good of the cause you'd like to add uh, before we cut off? Will no no Ethan. I think we we hit we had a lot of good topics. It was fun. Well, okay. Fun. We'll we'll. Uh, well, thanks, uh, everybody, for joining us for another episode of Cross Examination. And uh, we will be back with another uh, segment of Wanda Watch as, <laughs> as, uh, as we, we talk about uh, WandaVision uh, going forward and kind of what, uh, uh, you know, maybe next episode we can talk a bit about what other Marvel TV shows uh, right. they have coming uh, down the pipe. So, and uh, again... I definitely recommend people to check out uh, The Mandalorian, and there's a lot of new exciting stuff coming for Star Wars, uh, especially in the TV realm on the on the small screen through Disney Plus. So, uh, with that, we will we will leave you, and we will see you soon on another episode of Cross Examination.